Hi, everybody. Today I'm doing math. I know a lot of you guys, when you hear the word math, you immediately back up and you're like, whoa, hold on, Joe, those four letter words. But don't worry, we're going to get through it together. And if you need more help with math, be sure to go to the prep agent website we have in the links below. Our practice exams have a math section for all those people who are in a state that tests on math. Remember, not all states cover math. But if you're in one of those states that do, we got you. We have plenty of math practice exams on your user control panel that you could use to practice and prepare for the exam. So today I'm going to go over math questions and give explanations in hopes that it helps you understand what you need to do when taking your real estate exam. So without further ado, let's do some math. So let's jump right into it. My information today is taken from Stu's math crash course companion guide. Stu is one of our instructors here at Prep Agent. There he is with our trademark hat, right by that logo with the hat. We love that. Stu study tips, write down what you know about the question every time, punch the calculations into your calculator multiple times, save the math for the end, try all different methods of studying. That is true, that's big. At Prep Agent, we try and make as many different ways to learn as possible from flashcards to practice questions to webinars to different types of PDF files. So we try and provide something for everybody. He did write save the math at the end and something I teach as well is save the most difficult stuff for the end because you want to be freshest for the stuff you have the most chance of getting correct. But if math is super simple for you, maybe just get out of the way and just do it. But for those of us find it a little challenging and want to compartmentalize that part of our brain for the end, then do that. Save that math for the end. So key information here that Stu shared in this guide that he built, the T-bar method. Place your hand over what you are trying to solve for. And the remaining information is the math you need to do to find your answer. This can be used anytime you're trying to work with percentages. So you see the circle part and at the bottom base and rate. So base times rate. And then part is divided by that number. That's why it's up top. When you have cap rate, this is exactly the same as the T-bar method. However, I find that some students find it easier to identify the part, base, and rate when we rename them appropriately for cap rate problems. So you see in the bottom, those two are multiplied against each other, rate times value, and net in operating income is divided by that. Some key information you guys should know, area of a rectangle. To find the area of a square rectangle, you simply multiply two sides together. For example, A times B equals area. To find the area of a triangle, it is going to be one half the base times height. Key information, how many square feet are in an acre? 43,560. Remember, four old ladies driving 35 in a 60. Or you could just remember, flip the first two, you get three, four, five, six, zero. Or you could remember, separated by the commas, three plus four is seven, five, six, zero is 11, seven, 11, for those of you who love Slurpees. Or you could just remember 43,560 square feet, whatever works for you. Okay, and government survey system. So 36 sections equals one township, one section equals one square mile, 640 acres equals one square mile. And now most importantly, commission problems. Most of you guys are here because you did a commission problem at one point, okay? You saw somebody sold a house, you're like, well, if that house was this much, I would make that much, I need to get my real estate license. Sally is a salesperson at Silly Time Realty. Her split with her brokerage is 50-50. Sally sold a home for 375,000 and her total commission to Silly Time Realty was 3.5%. How much did Sally make? So what are the key concepts to remember? The commission is always based of what the home sells for, not what it is listed for or what someone offered. Whenever we are trying to figure out how much someone made, their split is a percentage of what the brokerage made. So solving this problem. Step one, write everything down, starting with what is the question asking for, so how much money did Sally make off the sale? Sally's on a 50-50 split. The home sold for 375,000. The commission to the brokerage is 3.5%. Th 
the calculation using that t-bar method. So formulas are sometimes helpful in helping students figure out what calculations they should be doing. Using the t-bar is simple and is used in any question where you have a percentage of a number. So part of top, base and rate, so base times rate, and part is divided by that. So rules for the t-bar method. Part, always the smaller number if the rate is less than 100%. Base, the larger number if the rate is less than 100%. So rate equals the percentage. So let's go over the calculation for that problem we just did. So we're trying to figure out the commission. So 365,000 goes on the bottom left, 3.5% on the bottom right. 375,000 times 3.5%. You would do the following calculation and you would get 13,125. Woo, I need to get my real estate license. Remember, 3.5 as a decimal is 0 0.035. It's important to remember that, guys. So part equals Sally's pay, Base, commission to the brokerage. Rate, commission slip percentage. Sally's pay, 13,125 times 50%. You've got to remember the brokerage commission. You would do the following calculation. 13,125 times 50% equals 6,562.50. Remember, 50% as a decimal is 0.5. To find the dollar amount a salesperson would make, we did the following. Find out how much the brokerage made by multiplying the sales price by the commission to the brokerage. We then took that number and multiplied it by the salesperson split with their brokerage. This will show you how to do a commission problem solving for the price of the home if they provide you with the commission and the percentage. Bob is a salesperson at Buddy Real Estate Agency. His most recent sale he took a home check for is $5,590. He has a split of 50% of what the total commission to the brokerage is. If the total commission on the sale was 3% to the brokerage, how much did the home sell for? So, key concepts to remember. We'll have to work backwards in this question. The first question is usually much easier for students to solve. Use what you learned in the first question to help you solve for this one. So solving the problem. Remember, as Stu wrote before, write everything down, starting with what is the question asking for. How much did the home sell for? Bob makes 50% of what the brokerage takes in. Bob made 5,590. The commission to the brokerage is 3%. The calculation, so you get part, we know that, so that's 5,590. Base, total commission to the brokerage, rate equals split percentage. You would do the following calculation. 5,590 divided by 50% equals 11,180. Remember, 50% as a decimal is 0.5. So the calculation. 11,180 divided by 3% equals 372,667. Remember, 3% as a decimal is 0.03. In summary, to find out how much the home sold for, you must do the following. Remember that we are working backwards off the first problem. So our last step of multiplying the split by the total commission due to the brokerage to find out what the salesperson makes has to be reversed. That is step one and will tell us how much the brokerage made. We then took that number and divided it by the total commission to the brokerage. Let's do one more about seller net. This will show you how to solve for a seller net problem. The seller wants to net X. Stan is selling his home. Stan currently has a $45,000 mortgage on the property as well as a $20,000 home equity loan he took out on the property. What would the price need be if a 4% commission were to be included and Stan wanted to clear 40,000 to put towards his new home? Key concepts, net, what someone will make after expenses. You can work 
backwards off the answers. If you get the correct answer, it doesn't matter how you get there. Solving the problem, write everything down. And here we go. How much must the home sell for? Stan has $45,000 mortgage. Stan has $20,000 equity loan. 4% commission to be included. And Stan wants a net $40,000. So the calculation, Stan has to pay back both loans and have on top of that enough money for himself for his new home. Minimally, the home must sell for that after he pays a commission. You would do the following calculations. 45,000 plus 20,000 plus 40,000 equals 105,000. This is how much Stan has to have left over after paying a commission. Remember, the commission is based off the total sales price. So the calculation. A lot of students make the mistake at this point to multiply the 105,000 by the percent of the commission. Remember, the commission is based off the sale price. We don't know that yet. 105,000 is what Stan needs to make after taking out the commission. You could do one of the two following methods. Multiply each answer by 9.6%. The answer that produces 105,000 is correct, or 105,000 divided by 96% equals 109,375. In summary, to solve for a seller net problem, you must do the following. Add up all the money that the seller needs after the commission is to be paid. Subtract the commission from 100%. This is how we got 96%. Multiply each answer by the new number or divide the seller's desired net by that number. I'm referencing the percentage you got after subtracting the commission from 100%. Well, I hope that helped, and we will do more of these with more math problems in the future. So. Remember to subscribe to the Prep Agent YouTube channel as more is on its way. Thanks, everybody. Bye.